Hey internet, I accidentally smashed the screen of my Yaesu FT2D. I have a bad habit of doing this at this point. This is the second screen of a Yaesu HT that I've smashed. Maybe I should switch the bow fangs. The big problem with this is, is not that the screen's broken, but that the radio has a touch screen and the touch screen's broken. And since most of the functions are accessed using the touch screen, kind of renders the radio useless. The big problem now is I can change the VFO using the knob, but I'm stuck in digital mode. Kind of bricked at this point without using the touchscreen. Luckily, I gave Yesu a call and they sent me a new screen. 23 bucks, I think. Here's a close-up of the damage. Did her, did her in pretty good there. You can see all right there, it's all smashed. All right, let's fix it. Invoice. I always like the way Yaesu packs their parts. They kind of compartmentalize things in plastic. So I ordered three parts, um, a screen, a adhesive patch, I guess you call it, and a screw. And the screw is used to uh, get the radio apart according to the data sheet. And I like how they wrap the screw in foam. So let's get into this and uh, see what the screen actually looks like. If you watched my other video on repairing the uh, the other uh, HT screen, that uses zebra stripes. And I'm really hoping this one doesn't use zebra stripes. Connect the LCD screen to the circuitry, but we'll see. There it is. I'm guessing one of the one one connector here is the touch screen, the capacitive touch, and the other one's the data for the LCD. And it looks like it has a little protective film on the back side and a protective film on the front side. This was uh, twenty something bucks, which was more expensive than the other screen I had to replace. All right, what else did we get? Let's check out the other parts. Okay, this is, um, this should be like a little sticker that kind of holds the screen into the tray um, in here. And this should just be a screw of an odd size that the service manual says you need to use to actually get inside the radio. I like how they wrapped it up. So there we go. There's our, there's our parts. Screen, film, screw to use to take it apart. All right, let's get into this. Obviously the battery comes off first, and I believe the knobs come off, and I think the knobs should come off, yeah. And these should just pull off, hopefully. Let's figure it out. Two. It looks like there's a collet right here with an O-ring, and um, yeah, might be a little bit of exploratory. All right, two screws here come out. This screw, the long one that I had to order, threads in here. And if you tighten it, from what I understand, I hope this works, is this should pull the entire radio assembly out. They just didn't destroy the card slot. That's what was holding it in. Shit. All right, make sure you take the SD card out. Hopefully I just didn't destroy that slot. And I might've done that. That sucks. Okay, anyways, um, I actually wanted to order this screen here, but it came as a part of the whole front panel assembly. Nice little gasket. Mine's very dirty, but you can tell there's lots of gaskets around here. There's our screen and our connectors. And just because I'm curious, I'm gonna see if this SD card goes back in. I might have broken that, guys.
not sure where that came from. There's the header that goes, puts the two pieces together. And this just looks like the connector that goes from this potentiometer back over to this board. Let's free that up so we can work on the LCD. Oh look, there's a little tiny battery in here as well. I must keep the time and date. So right here is a little latch that holds that in. I'm assuming that the LCD is kind of held in with the same type of latches underneath. I think this must be the RF side of the board, filters and things like that. Over here must be the control side. And there's the uh, card slot that I destroyed. Hopefully I can fix that. First things first though. So I paused the camera for a little while to figure out what I'm going to do with this SD card slot um, that I accidentally destroyed. What I ended up doing was pulling out the guts to make the uh, card pop out um, because it wasn't latching. And I think I might have pulled out an important read switch. I don't know exactly how these slots work, so it may or may not be functional in the future. It looks here that this, this piece, they gave it a little subboard, so if it gets destroyed you can just replace that but unfortunately with this, it's not so good. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna solder the ends back on so it's mechanically stable, and if it does work, I can just leave the card in there. It won't latch, but maybe it'll work. Um, yeah, I'm a little bummed out about that. Tiny parts. I don't know, maybe in the future I could find this part of Mauser and replace it. I have a rework station at work, um, but for now I'm just gonna tack this back on with the soldering iron so the mechanical bits are still there, and hopefully, when it all goes back together, it'll still read the card. That's as good as it's gonna get. Okay, back to the main reason why we're in here, is to replace this broken screen with a new one. First thing we gotta do is separate the broken screen from this light guide, which I'm hoping will be easy and will leave me a relatively glass shattered free area. <laughs> this is very sharp thin glass. Old bit. I think this top layer right here is the uh, digitizer board. It actually looks like only the digitizer broke, not the actual screen. When the screen was working, there wasn't any pixels that were out. It was just that, so yeah, it's just the whole assembly sandwiched together. Okay, now I have a new plastic bit, but if I can get away without using it, I'm not going to. Let's just see if this sticks on. I feel like it's that easy. Didn't need to use this. I'm gonna guess that this goes on first. This little connector is really hard to get on. Okay, that's in. It goes like that. And I think this goes on first. Okay, screw it back together.
Uh, next we'll put the two pieces back together. And this just snaps together like a sandwich. A couple screws go in and weather stripping, this goes back into the case. I guess now we just stick it in. Hopefully this seal kind of falls into where it's supposed to go. Oh, we gotta remember to take this protective film off too. Don't touch the screen. Okay, I'm not gonna put the screws in because I wanna see if it turns on. Got the display. And the touchscreen works. That wasn't so bad. I guess we need to see if the card works at this point. Hoping it does. Nope. Fuck. Well, there you have it. I broke the SD card, but I fixed the screen. I might go back in and uh, see if I can do something about that. Oh, you know, I was putting the SD, the SD card in backwards. Hold on, maybe it does work. Contacts up. Nope, no SD card. Okay, short little update here. I was bummed out that the SD card slot was broken, so I took the radio back apart, opened the SD card slot back up, soldered the card detect pins together, and removed the spring device, and stuck the card back in there. And the radio seems to be happy. The replacement card slot is about less than two bucks from Mauser, and the actual part number, the manufacturer part number, is listed on the service manual. So I think in the future, if it really bugs me, I will um, order that part, maybe the next order from Yesu, and um, get the rework station out and change that part out. Anyways, thanks for watching again.